Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Hello again York, after filming Cotmanthorpe, I decided to leave the camera on the dashboard as I made my way towards the next village. Where we're headed today is the western bank of the River Ouse again, to catch a place with a bit of Roman flair about it, but also more than a few caravans. Welcome to Acaster Malbis. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. So here's the second of the two Acaster villages which sit on the western bank of the River Ouse. You might remember Acaster Selby a while ago. This is its northern neighbour, Acaster Malbis. Acaster Malbis is located some five miles south of York, within the city boundaries, unlike Acaster Selby, which is in the district of Selby. It's the larger of the two Acasters and its main street fronts the Ouse. Much like its smaller brother though, the derivation of its name is similar. Acaster indicates a Roman influence on the area, as the Latin word castra means camp. In fact, this was more than just a camp, it was a Roman port. After the Romans departed, the village would acquire the second part of its name, Malbis, derived from a local landowning family. The Malbis family acquired lands here during the reign of Richard I, holding on to it for about 200 years. Malbis, or D. Malbis, was a Norman personal name that in French means very swarthy. Now, if you're expecting to see the former RAF Acaster Malbis in this episode, you won't. Most of it falls within Acaster Selby, and as such, I covered it in that episode. It's linked in today's end screen. The modern village still relies on the ooze, but these days it's for tourism. Acaster Malbis has become a popular place for caravanners and campers, and most people who visit today come for a short break. In short, it's a Roman riverside village with caravans. Unique. Let's go. We begin in the car on Intake Lane on our way into the main village. Almost straight away we have one of these, a caravan park. This one is called Mount Pleasant. There are two types of caravan park in the village, those that are residential and those that are for tourers. This one's residential and as such we can't drive into it because they are strictly private. However, I can show you a caravan park or two later thanks to some handy public rights of way. Next to Mount Pleasant there's a residential area, Lakeside, named as such thanks to it standing next to a lake, which is behind all of these houses. This is one of the biggest residential areas in the parish. Acaster Malbis is generally rural, covering 1800 acres of land whilst having just over 800 residents, most of which live here. Thanks to the caravan parks though, Acaster Malbis's population fluctuates depending on the time of year, generally rising in the warmer summer months, as you might expect. The village doesn't have a great deal of amenities. It has a pub which we'll catch on our main walk, but there's no shops. The nearest ones are located either in Cotmanthorpe or in Bishopthorpe. There's also no school, but it did have one once upon a time. It was founded by John Knowles in 1603. 
primary education these days is provided in Bishopthorpe and secondary school children attend Fulford School, Millthorpe School or Tadcaster Grammar School. Intake Lane eventually becomes Mill Lane at a corner which we're about to reach. On that corner you'll find the base of a local boat company called Acaster Marine. This stretch of the ooze is navigable and a lot of people moor boats in the village. Acaster Marine offer boat sales as well as general boatyard amenities like storage. They also have a 57 foot slipway which is open for self launch to the general public, 7 days a week, although I doubt anyone was launching anything on this day and you can see why. Now the worrying thing about seeing that flood is this might affect my route because uh, the sort of last part of this route is to walk down the, the side of the ooze uh, and then sort of head back to the car via a path which comes out somewhere up there. Um, this could be fun. <laughs> I might get wet feet. You never know, you never know. Uh, anyway, I've parked here on uh, Main Street. I haven't missed much at this corner, just another caravan park really. You can't park the car anywhere down there because it's a single yellow line. So this is about as far up as I, as, as I could potentially put the car. And from here it's a walk straight up this road um, and a right turn at the top. And then we'll come back through the village and hopefully down the side of the use. Whether or not it will work, we'll soon find out. Concerned about the flood affecting my route, I opted to reverse it. This is where I was meant to finish. This is Cobbler's Trod, a footpath which forms part of the Yorvik Way, a long distance circular path around York which starts in Tadcaster. We'll have been on it before unwittingly, it passes through places like Eskrick and Bolton Percy. Here in Acaster Malbis it runs alongside the western bank of the Ouse, a scenic riverside amble usually, and at this corner I thought it was going to be just that. However, these pretty views didn't last long. I walked up towards the centre of the village taking them all in, but I didn't get very far. The flood had indeed affected the path. This was too deep to wade through. The flood was as a result of heavy rainfall in the Dales catchment a few days earlier. I know people don't like it when I mention flooding, but here in Acaster Malbis, flood water seems to be a regular occurrence. Usually though, it's not too bad. So uh, it appears I'm going to have to turn around. I don't think it's all that deep, but I haven't got my wellies on. I've only got a pair of trainers on. I mean, I suppose I could take, take them off and take my socks off and try and wade through it, but it's probably not worth it. I mean, <laughs> um, it's probably just better just turning around and staying dry. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully see what I was going to film up there later later if that makes any sense because i have reversed the route now um but it looks like i'm gonna go back to the original route <laughs> so uh yeah that's a bit disappointing but uh, you know these things happen rivers are very i don't know i don't want to say they're fickle things but um you know if they're if they're not managed properly they do flood don't they um and here it looks like they could do with some flood defenses of some kind so uh yeah Disappointing, but uh, we uh, we will adapt. So reverting back to the route I had planned, here's Mill Lane and this is the Methodist Church, one of two religious buildings in the village. Founded in 1880 as a Wesleyan chapel, this is built in Gothic style on a site given for religious purposes by the then Lord of the Manor. There's a few listed buildings in the village and here's one of them, Hall Garth, a former 17th century farmhouse, arguably the grandest in the place. A bit further and we hit the village hall, or to give it its proper name, the Acaster Malbis Memorial Institute, which was built in 1927. It's dedicated to the memory of the men of Acaster Malbis who served in World War I. Their names are listed on a plaque inside the main hall. After leaving a card on the notice board I moved on and to the right there's a field with a beacon upon which hangs the coat of arms of Sir John de Malbis, used as the parish council's logo. 
Now, if you've been following me for a long time, you'll know exactly what this is. This is a pinfold. This pinfold, once used for straying cattle, was restored in 1987. I think we can get a look inside this one. I think there's an entrance around this side. Yes, there is. Here we go. There we are. There's a pinfold, what the inside of it looks like. Okay, so from here, uh, we are carrying on up the road this way. There's a caravan park over there, Poplar Farm. Now, most of the caravan parks around here are private, but this one we can get a little bit up close and personal with because there's a public right of way that runs right through it, and that's where we're going next. At the northern end of the village, you'll find not just one, but two caravan parks next to each other. These are Poplar Farm and Chestnut Farm. Poplar Farm has facilities for touring caravans and motorhomes, and also accommodates residential caravans and holiday homes. They also have a field for tent camping too. The public right of way I was referring to will take us through Chestnut Farm, which is a mixture of residential caravans and tourers. According to its website, Chestnut Farm has recently launched a brand new development of one and two bedroom residential lodges available to purchase for people over 45. An old red phone box is perhaps the last thing you'd expect to see in a caravan park, but if you walk through here, that's exactly what you'll see, and here it is. At its easternmost end, Chestnut Farm overlooks the ooze. Now, given what we already know about the river, it seems sometimes the water can come to you. You're not going to believe this. I am going to get wet feet. Look at this. Part of the caravan park has been flooded. This is the exit. This, that's the road. That is the road just there where my finger is. Unbelievable. Now, hopefully I can wade through this a little bit. I, I kind of need to because some of the major village landmarks are on that road. I have no choice but to try and walk through this water. Hopefully it's not too deep. Wish me luck. Right, it's too deep. I can't carry on at this point. I've had a quick look at the map. There is an alternative route, but it may lead me down somewhere which is similar to this. So I think at some point I am going to get a wet foot or two, um, but it's better than trying to wade through that. Um, certainly I won't be able to get to the church, to Holy Trinity Church, because at the end of this path, I was supposed to turn left and head for the church, which is just over there, Holy Trinity Church. Um, I hope that's not been flooded. Um, so yeah, we'll go back, we'll go back the way we came and down this other alternative route, hopefully it's not going to be flooded but you never know yep no joy this is flooded as well there you go that's the road over there to, to my immediate right is the pub the ship in and uh i can't even get to that there is one last resort and that is to go for uh hauling lane but i'll have to uh go back through the caravan park again for the third time <laughs> and see if I can access it that way. Um, I'm hoping to get as close as I can to the sort of front, if you like, the sort of main street of Acaster Malvis, uh, so I can talk about the pub because it's got a, an interesting bit of history I want to discuss. If I can't do it, uh, the rest of this video will have to be um, just pictures, which is really disappointing because I know it's quite a beautiful little place, this. And I can't get to it. I can't get to most of it. And it's so frustrating. We'll try hauling lane and see if that works. This is as close as I could get to the front of the village, but it's the pub I was interested in, so it didn't really matter. This is the Ship Inn, the only pub in Acaster Malbis which dates from the 17th century. It has a literary claim to fame. It features in a novel, Barbara Whitehead's 1990 murder mystery entitled The Girl with the Red Suspenders. For those who like the supernatural, apparently the ship has had more than a few reports of ghostly incidents over the years as well. 
In late 2008 and early 2009, the pub was closed for major refurbishment after serious flooding when the ooze burst its banks. Hopefully that's not the case this time. Regular flood updates are posted on the Parish Council's website. One thing that seems to have escaped this latest watery encroachment is this garden gate folly that faces the ooze along Cobbler's Trod. One of the most iconic landmarks here, it seems possible that this is linked to Hall Garth, from aerial images anyway. Okay, so here we are then on Cobbler's Trod at the other side of the flooded part. For some reason, this, this bit where the folly is, is dry. Good thing, because I can I could, I could catch that. But I can't go any further, as you can see. That's uh, where I got stuck earlier. And I can't go anywhere that way either, which means the church, I'm afraid, is not going to be featured in this video. Um, so, yeah. Um, just thought I'd mention this house as well. This is the old vicarage. Uh, it's an English listed building. It dates to 1732, according to the stone above its door. Um, this has escaped the flood water, apparently. So that's good. But uh, can't say the same for the area around the pub and to the north of the village. But um, I think I've, apart from the church, I think I've covered everything I wanted to, which is a good thing. I do hope this flood doesn't affect um, anyone uh, who lives here because this is obviously the probably one of the worst things to ever happen to you is to uh, be flooded. I mean, we live on top of a hill, so we don't ever have to have this problem. But uh, I do feel for people who have to, you know, pay for all the damage that floods cause. And um, hopefully this one's not caused anybody any problems, hopefully. Right, I'm going to make my way back the way I came uh, to Hauling Lane and head back to the car. And that, my friends, is the parish of Acaster Malvis. I will just give you a special section on the church, but apart from that, I'm done. The Church of Holy Trinity stands a little way out of the village on the road towards Bishopthorpe. It stands on the site of a previous Norman church built around 1100. The present church exists thanks to the Fairfaxes, who acquired the Malvis family estates in the 1300s. They pulled the old church down and built this one. Holy Trinity is a Grade 1 listed building. It has a cruciform plan with a south porch and a pointed arch. Inside, there's a medieval font and an elaborate 17th century pulpit. There's also a 14th century effigy of Sir John de Malvis too, who died in 1316. In 1886, the church was restored, which added its wooden bell tower and spire. The east window has stained glass, which dates back to 1320, which is described as very fine by church experts. Some more can be found in the south transept window. Its newest stained glass window, seen here, was added in 2019, designed by Janet Parkin, featuring woodland creatures. Now I did look to see if there was an alternative way to get to the church. Um, there is, but it's a, a very, very long way around. Uh, don't really have time for that. <laughs> so hopefully that special section will suffice for you today. Nothing I can do about the flood water. Um, it's just one of those, those things, it happens. Uh, that's the parish of Acaster Malvis then. And that's another one down in York. Nine down and uh, 22 to go. Hope you've enjoyed this one despite the flood water. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Acaster Malvis and I'm out.